Hello, brothers and sisters in Christ. This is Friday, July the 3rd, and it's 5.21 p.m. And um, I have some dreams to share with you. Um, I'm sure they are prophetic. Um, I'm pretty sure they are. But I want to remind you that a lot of the dreams and visions, messages coming out, are not all for the bride. They don't all pertain to everybody. Just as ones for the bride do not pertain to the all the church because they're not all ready to go. So please keep that in mind and remember we are not to fear. If we are here to see any of this, so be it. It's the will of the Lord. I don't know why we would be when Luke 21 36 says pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. So with that, I'm not going to tell you who the people are, just the dreams. Um, I can say this, this one here was from a young man, a child. Um, but he felt led to share this. It was from about a month ago. Um, oh, we turned nine in April. Seems the dream has different sequences and places, sort of at times jumping from one scene to another. The bullets and police missiles flying around made me think of Dana's gargoyles. If any of you saw the video that I posted couple three nights ago about dreams someone's dream and then I shared a video about Pastor Dana out of Kentucky how he had three dreams well he said three but I listened to it twice and I only heard two but I did have to stop it and then come back to it so maybe I, I missed the sentence where he said now the third dream was blah 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 and I thought it was all one for the second dream. But anyway, yeah, there were gargoyles flying around. I believe he said 10 feet off the ground, like right overhead then. And I'm like, Lord, that is something I surely want to escape from. Okay, so if you don't mind, get us out of here before that happens. Although I guess we could just stand here and look at him and say, Jesus rebuke you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus or whatever. Like I said, we're not to fear. All right. This was June 1st, 2020. My son is a hot air balloon. Oh, she probably meant my son is in a hot air balloon with lots of people and a captain. All worldly. Captain wants to go to the very end of the universe, to the last planet, and even beyond. My son tells him, it's impossible. It's not going to happen. There's no oxygen there. My son feels anxious already with the current lack of oxygen. Captain is pompous and sure of himself. Oh, we'll do it. Before long... Alarm sounds are coming. The balloon is starting to fall. But my son is not scared. He knew this or something like this would happen. My son thinks, quote, it's time, unquote, and everyone dies now. He goes to heaven, others to hell. But to his surprise, the balloon with Captain and all folks fall into a giant stinky dumpster that's soft, full of biodegradable trash and other soft stuff. My son said he laughed about this part when we woke up. The trash was so stinky, though not dangerous. The captain was infuriated and surprised about what had happened. They climbed out of the basket, 
of the hot balloon, the hot air balloon. Now my son is in a dangerous city full of chaos and violence. There are some dead bodies lying on the ground, but none, but more so, lots of panicked people running all over. Super large bullets, police missiles are flying around. They are four feet long and about a foot in width. They have red, blue, and white lights flashing on them kind of like the lights of a police car. These missiles find their targets are computer controlled. My son is not afraid. He knows where he's going if he dies. One missile hits him in the back side of the head, but it doesn't really hurt him. Though others die, Hits him in the back side of the head, but it doesn't really hurt him. Though others die if a missile hits them. To my son, it only put a little bump on his head that healed quickly. Hmm. Again, another missile comes toward him, but my son dodges it easily. It comes back, and my son effortlessly smashes it with his fist. Mom, I was super strong. I had huge muscles. The bullet explodes with a red flash of fire. One of the guards, a police-like man, captures my son and brings him to a jail. Again, he is not afraid, but has total peace. I know who I belong to, and I know God has a purpose for me here. He does according to his plan, and his plan is perfect. My son prays. The earth quakes for about three seconds. A living fire comes to him. He knows this is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has a sword of flames with him. He destroys the door of the jail in no time. The door melts, and he leads my son out. The earth quakes more. The jail building tilts and turns to its side. All people and things tilt along with the building. The entire building gets crushed and destroyed. And all the guards and other people along are crushed inside the building. My son is by the water. This is a city harbor. The edge of the water is a direct, deep drop down. My son sees a huge piece from the sky coming from the outer space fall in the water somewhere further in the distance. It's a meteor or a comet. It's a huge, huge piece. Now the water starts quickly receding from the edge of the water, the harbor, and recedes far, far away at least two kilometers, about a mile. This is the effect he knows happens before a tsunami is going to hit. Smart boy. He knows the most giant wave is coming, at least 50 times larger than anything ever before. People from the shore, his friends, who are really not his friends, but very worldly people, People like his classmates and such. Climb down these metal pipes on the wall of the harbor. Unto the bottom of the now empty ocean floor. The wall is stone or a stone-like material. My son is warning them about the coming tsunami wave. The drop down is so vast that my son has to climb down himself as well, in order to be heard by them. His voice would not be heard otherwise. Others are playing in the sand, catching crabs and building sandcastles and entertaining themselves. Far, far away, you can see a gigantic white tsunami wave coming. My son points it out to them. But they disregard him and explain it away with their reason. They continue playing. 
At this point, the earth starts shaking, and my son says that he could see that the tectonic plates of the earth were moving and shaking fast and pretty fa powerfully. People still continued playing. My son started quickly but carefully climbing up the metal pipes along the side of the harbor as fast as he could, but still with full focus. He got to the top, onto the safe harbor, and now and by now the earth was shaking violently, but people were still playing. I can just see this happening. It started to get darker at this point. It was dusk. My son was walking fast, away from the shore, as far as he thought he could, to get to higher and safer ground. At this point, he started hearing a loud sound that resembled almost a machine gun. He wondered for a second if someone was out to get him, that this might be dangerous. The sound got louder and louder, and my son was nearly panicking. Then he realized that it was a huge helicopter. He doesn't understand right away if this is a good thing or danger. The helicopter comes right over him. A rope is thrown down to him and he hears a voice from far, far above. Take this rope and come up here. My son grabs the rope and now the rope is hoisted up by a machine or such so he doesn't need to climb. Just hold on while he is hoisted up. He is in the most secure and safe helicopter ever. Nothing can take this thing down. He understands they are taking him home. My son is up safely in the helicopter. He is given food and nourishment, water to drink, and he knows he is safe and goes to rest. When he wakes up, he sees people down at the beach are still playing as if nothing was to happen. And the wave, flood, tsunami is the largest thing my son's ever seen. So big, he even asks if the helicopter is safe. They tell him nothing can take it down. They are safe. At this point, the earth starts quaking even more violently. The people on the ground, the bottom of the ocean floor, start realizing that they are in danger and need to escape. They start panicking and trying to climb up the metal pipes by the side of the shore. The side starts crumbling and turning into ash, or almost about to turn to ash. They realize the stone is about to soon vaporize into ash and dust. And they are horrified and panicked by now, trying desperately to get up. By the time they get up, it all turns into ash, crumbles down from right behind their feet. And now, and they now see the giant tsunami wave that's coming. Okay, it's almost over. People run to try to find safety. They run to a tall building. The break, they break the door of the building and break into the elevator. It has a security code only to be used by those who have the code. They break the computer by kicking it in. They take the elevator to the highest ground and go to the roof of the building. Orange hot lava is ready to burst out of the seams of the earth. People are certain that the flood will neutralize the heat of the lava. Everything starts getting super hot and their feet are burning because even the floor of the rooftop is getting hot. Boy, doesn't that part sound a little bit like Chris's dream? When he got to the rooftop. The Lord told him to get into a closet and he thought that it might be uh, flames, it was flames and hot, uh, 
white lights he saw. That just reminded me of his dream. But in this case, he's saying it was lava. This this boy, this nine-year-old boy now is having this dream. And he says, orange hot lava is ready to burst out of the seams of the earth. People are certain that the flood will neutralize the heat of the lava. Everything starts getting super hot and their feet are burning because even the floor of the rooftop is getting hot. The earth quakes so much that it's moving like it's literally jumping. People are moving up and down by multiple feet. I guess moving up and down several feet up and down rocks and giant pieces of rock fall on people at this point the tsunami wave hits the lava and the fire burns through the water and people realize neither the lava nor the flood will stop People get so scared, my son sees one completely lose his marbles. He, his screws come out of his head, and he faints out of horror and out of lack of understanding of what is really happening. Lots of people faint now. When they wake up, the building tumbles down. Everything gets crushed. There is fire, ash, earthquaking, giant flood. All at the same time, everything burns. The earth melts. The helicopter arrives to its destination, and my son knows he is home. He understands he's in heaven, and I'm there too waiting for him. Wow, that's very intense for a nine-year-old, but if you knew his history, you'd understand. He's very blessed and gifted already. Now that's the long dream. All right. The other one I wanted to share, let me find it. Okay, I thought it was right near it. Hold on, give me just a minute. Where did it go? Oh, I think this is it. All right. Now, this lady says, My friends, I have been having consistent dreams of being in great darkness. I believe that this is my... All right, I'll read it first and then I'll tell you. She's having dreams of... Consistent dreams of being in great darkness. Something is coming very soon. It is spiritual darkness for sure, but it may also be a darkness brought about by an EMP. I had another dream last night. I was walking down a very dark street. I knew I had to hurry home. Suddenly, I became aware of something coming behind me. I looked back to see what appeared to be an older black man, a short child, and a strange looking dog. I ran towards my home, which was a beautiful mansion. I opened the door, looking behind me, and they were approaching me quickly. I ran inside, slammed the door, and locked it. Just before the door closed, the old man gave me a demonic smile and said, Aren't you going to let me in? 
I yelled, no, then I awoke. Okay, and she was warning all the people this was sent to, to pay attention to the warning dreams or warning videos she's been sending. Okay, when she said she reached her beautiful mansion, okay, uh, and, and the boy in his dream was very strong, okay? He only had a little, he had some anxiety and a little fear here or there, but for the most part, he wasn't scared. And he was able, at his age, to climb all that way up, and, and this helicopter was sent to pick him up. Okay, this is just what comes to my mind in both these dreams. We've been raptured. We got our instructions. We were sent back down to help the people down here get ready for the second rapture. Now, even though the man and there's a, a child, have you all heard of a black eyed child? They have great big eyes. They're beautiful. They're demons. They're, they're, they're some kind of demons in a child's body. Why else wouldn't it, the child have been raptured? This lady doesn't live in a mansion. I know that. She, but now she has a mansion in her dream. I think she... The, the man and the child were, or were demonized, people, demons in human bodies, trying to get her, but she got back up into heaven and to her mansion before they could. Just my, just my opinion. But she, the Lord told me after the first rapture, three days of darkness would come. Well, I say three days. I say three days because that's what a whole lot of other people started getting dreams, visions of, and messages or whatever. I was told a period of thick darkness, thick darkness, would cover the earth okay he did not tell me three days would it be from an EMP or does does God just make everything dark he said no one would be able to know who had been taken and who had been left there'd be no electricity nothing total darkness and that's when people were saying, when a lot of people were getting their visions and dreams, some people were saying you got to have beeswax candles or, or your candles won't work. Uh, that's uh, pretty sure a Catholic thing. That's not necessarily true. You can have candles and very bright flashlights, but I don't know if they'll work. They may work a little ways. They're very super bright. I don't know. But but um, I, if you call upon the name of the Lord, you'll have light. But that's, that was just a feeling that I got. He who calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. We come back down. And I'm, I'm not sure if it's during the period of darkness or right after, or what. So, if you find yourself in extreme darkness, you call upon the name of the Lord and just pray. Pray. He said, pray. He said, they will pray. They will pray like they never have before. So, I guess people will just start doing it just because they realize they were left. Hey, 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 Jasper. Hey, hey, don't tear up my ottoman, man. We like that ottoman. You like to lay on it. He tries to get the cover of this ottoman. You know how dogs like to take a blanket and make it into a little circle? Yeah, well, that one's stapled down, man. Don't do that. Don't do that. Don't. He's so sweet. All right, now, the last one is in my comments. And Bob, and it was from Bob and um, Kathy and uh, Dan from uh, Grafted In. 
I get their emails, and um, apparently, one of them said um, a lot of confirmations about war were coming in. People having dreams of war. Well, we know, if you know the seals, after, according to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse verse 2 or verse 3, is the departure. It says the falling away, but that should say the departure. It's in the Geneva Bible of 1599. Hey man, don't tear up the furniture. Jasper, stop it. No, no, no. No, no, no. He's getting anxious, wants to play. Okay. Where was I? Oh, yeah. So I saw that title that she had. Uh, there was a video, and then she said, lots of confirmations coming in about war. Okay. Well, let me read to you. Um, let's see if I can find it on here. Let's see. I believe it's under this video. I couldn't, I guess I could have had them all open. No, I couldn't do the two emails. I couldn't have two emails open. I, could, I couldn't figure out how to do that, but I guess I could have had this one. Okay, here we go. Um... All right, here he says, uh, which I actually missed this because it said read more, and I didn't notice that. Okay, um, this is the one where my friend, I asked you last night, uh, um, I, our friend had woke up hearing um, the God of four days is now the God of 20. Okay, so it's under that video. And he said, Sorry, Jeannie, the only thing I get from this is how it's been six days or 6,000 years by our time in God's timetable since creation. But that has nothing to do with the different gods or four days. Someone had mentioned that on the fourth day, at the end of the fourth day, Jesus was crucified at the end of 4,000 years, and that's the truth. But anyway, he said, so basically I didn't get anything, Jeannie, sorry, but that's what came to my mind. Maybe someone else will get something. Yeah, some of y'all came up with some great explanations that are very plausible. Um... She said, or he said, also, Jeannie, I had a couple of weird dreams last night. In one, I was walking down the street and two jets flew by very low. One was Canadian, maybe both of them. But I knew the Americans were also a part of it. You know how in a dream, nobody tells you that, but you have a knowing, it, you just know the Americans are, are a part of it, or whatever. Okay, so he knew the Americans were also part of it. And I thought, oh, a good time for the bombs to drop. American Independence Day Eve, July 3rd. I also saw a few young Asians walking around as well. If that means anything, I wasn't scared or anything, but here in Canada, except when the air show is on, we never see military jets fly by. I thought I would pass this dream on to you, Bob. Okay, well, thank you for sharing that, Bob, because... Uh, that is most likely the Lord showing you uh, war. Probably, even though they were Canadian, 
it just might mean your Canadian military is beefing up their, uh, maybe they're practicing or getting ready to defend. So, since, um, what I saw of that, of that video from Kathy and Dan that grafted in Team Jesus about that video about war coming, we know the war has to come after the first rapture, is what I was saying. That in Second Thessalonians chapter 3, the falling away, which is the departure, has to happen before the Antichrist is revealed. In fact, let's go there because Second Thessalonians 2, I'll start with 2. Okay. Let's make it bigger. Just to, come in. Okay, it says, Now we request you, brethren, with regard to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him. Okay, verse 2, That you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or letter as if from us to the effect that the day of the Lord has come. Okay. Remember the other day I mentioned in my video about the day of the Lord. Okay. Let no one in any way deceive you. For it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. Which the Geneva Bible reads the departure. That's the first rapture. And the man of lawlessness is revealed. The son of destruction. Okay, so that's the first seal. When the seals get opened, the first seal is the man riding on the white horse with a bow. And when I looked that up, in the Strong's Concordance, the bow is something made of fabric. It's not a bow like you use with a bow and arrow. Okay? So either he has on a bow tie, the horse has a big bow on it, or someone suggested it could be a covenant. And I thought, the rainbow. Who do we know loves rainbows? Lit the White House up in a rainbow. You see? He could be carrying a banner. A rainbow banner. Okay. So, I just wanted to remind you that it's... He is revealed first. Second horse is war. Okay? So, don't let all these dreams and visions or whatever about war and destruction cause you to fear. Luke 21, 36, I will say it again. Pray that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that are to come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. I'll plead the blood of Jesus over this video. Myself, my computer, my internet connection, and over each and every one of you and your devices and your internet connections. And with that, I'll say bye for now. I will talk to you later.